Goodman. Fascism, could it happen here? That's a question increasingly being raised as Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump continues his bid for the White House. People as varied as former Labor Secretary Robert Reich, actor George Clooney, comedian Louis C.K., and, and Frank's stepsister, Ava Schloss, have suggested Trump is a fascist. Earlier this month, Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto criticized Trump by invoking the fascist dictators Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. And there have been episodes in human history, unfortunately, where these expressions of this strident rhetoric have only led to very ominous situations in the history of humanity. That's how Mussolini got in. That's how Hitler got in. They took advantage of a situation, a problem perhaps which humanity was going through at the time after an economic crisis. And I think what they put forward ended up at what we know today from history in global conflagration. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump has retweeted quotes by Italian fascist leader Benito Mussolini. He was asked about it on Meet the Press. The famous Mussolini quote, you retweeted it. Do you like the quote? Did you know it was sure. Mussolini? It's okay to know it's Mussolini. Look, Mussolini was Mussolini. It's okay to know. It's a very good quote. Donald Trump has waffled on accepting support from white supremacist groups like the KKK, and he's even encouraged hand salutes at his rallies that some say are reminiscent of Adolf Hitler. However, Donald Trump, um, is he a fascist? Could fascism ever come to America's shores? For more, we're joined by the father of fascism studies, Robert Paxton, professor emeritus of social science at Columbia University. Paxton's the author of several books, including The Anatomy of Fascism. Uh, his recent piece is headlined, Is Fascism's Fascism Back? And a while ago wrote a piece on the five stages of fascism. Professor Paxton, welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you very much for having so, me. What do you think of Donald Trump? Is he a fascist? Well, I think uh, Donald Trump uh, shows a, a rather alarming uh, willingness to use fascist themes and fascist styles, uh, which it, it's um, and the, the response this gets, the positive response, is uh, is alarming. What is fascism? Well, fascism is a mass nationalist movement uh, intended to to um, uh, restore a country that's been damaged or is in decline uh, by pro uh, by expansion, by violent attacks on enemies, internal as well as external enemies. Uh, and um, uh, uh, measures of authority, the replacement of, de of democracy by a, an authoritarian dictatorship. Explain what happened in Nazi Germany and uh, with Adolf Hitler. I mean, he didn't start by killing six million Jews. It, there was a buildup. Talk about how it started, and in Italy, and you particularly look at France. Well, in, in, the, in the case of Hitler, <clears throat> it took him 13 years. Uh, it started uh, in Munich as a, as, a, as a minor fringe movement of disgruntled war veterans. And uh, it percolated along. Uh, that was from World War One. From World War One. This is 1920, early 1920s. Uh, in the election of 1924, uh, he did very poorly if, 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 for a, a marginal. Uh, party, and then you have the depression in 1929 and 1930, and, and there are two things. There's this huge economic uh, uh, crisis with millions and millions, uh, tens of millions unemployed, and there's also a, a governmental deadlock. Uh, you you cannot uh, get any legislation passed uh, without uh, bringing in the social democrats. And the middle center and right absolutely won't work with social Democrats, although they're really quite moderate. Wait, wait. What are you, are you describing the United I'm States, describing, or are you de I'm describing, describing the German, uh, the, the German Weimar Republic really ceased to function as a as a as a republic in 1930 because uh, nothing could be passed, and the president acted under Article 48 of the Constitution, which gave him powers in an emergency to rule by decree. So between 1930 and 1933, President von Hindenburg ruled by decree. And they're, and they're, and the uh, political elites are desperate to get out of the situation. And here's Hitler, who has more uh, votes by this time than anybody else. He's up to 37 percent. He never gets a majority, but he's up to 37 percent. And they want to bring that into their tent and get uh, a, a, a solid mass backing. And so they, they co-opt Hitler. They bring him in. The other party that's growing is the Communist Party, and that's what's very different from today. Uh, there are two parties that are growing in 1932, the Communist Party, the Nazi Party. And if you don't bring in uh, the Nazi Party, then maybe it's the communists who are going to take over. And there's that dynamic, dynamic of social panic. They, they bring Hitler into the tent. And once he's there, he, uh, he, he doesn't have full power when he's 
chancellor. He doesn't even have all the ministries. But he then, uh, then he takes over full power, and nobody's willing to fight him because that would mean helping the communists. And then what happens? Then he becomes a dictator. He gets a four-year. Uh, he gets the parliament to pass a four-year enabling act that allows him to govern without consulting parliament in 33 and 37, and he uses that to, to build an unbeatable machine. He, it doesn't uh, bother to uh, to get it renewed. He gets it renewed, but it's 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 meaningless by that time. He does what he wants, and he has these huge rallies. Uh, he's enormously successful in restoring the economy and in bringing German uh, power back and dismantling the Versailles Treaty. And he uh, has these delirious mass rallies, and no one will dare to try to stop him, because it's either him or the communists. So, Eva Schloss, the half-sister of um, Anne Frank, Otto Frank, her father, remarried after his family was killed in the Holocaust. Eva Schloss was just quoted as saying in Newsweek, if Donald Trump becomes the next president of the United States, it would be a complete disaster. I think he's acting like another Hitler by inciting racism. She said, I remember how upset the world was when the Berlin Wall was erected in 1961, and now everyone is building walls again to keep people out. It's absurd. Well, uh, we don't know what Donald Trump would do if he were elected president. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a thoroughly um, um, self-centered uh, and aggressive personality. Uh, the danger, it seems to me, is that in a, in a deadlock between Trump and the Congress or Trump and the courts, he would indeed uh, take some kind of, uh, of non-constitutional action, and people would be afraid to say no. You talk, Professor Paxton, about the five stages of fascism. Yes. Explain. Well, uh, fascism <clears throat> confuses a lot of people, because at the very beginning, when it was a handful of disgruntled veterans, it sounded quite radical. But when it's in power, it allies with banks, industrialists, the army, the churches, and so forth. Uh, and, and so it changes uh, as, it, as it comes close to power, and it makes the bid for power. There's an opportunist uh, adjustment, whereby it gets along with the, with the previous, the uh, hated uh, conservatives. So uh, you have to look at each stage uh, somewhat separately. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, in general, I, I'm very leery of the use of the, of the term uh, too casually, and I do see great differences between uh, Trump and Fascism. Well, let me ask you about the, viol the violence at the okay. Trump rallies. Yes. You've got March 9th, the black protesters sucker punched, and then February 29th, a photographer slammed on the ground. Uh, November 21st, a black protester punched, kicked, briefly choked. October 23rd, a Latino protester kicked. Uh, October 14th, immigration activists are shoved, they're spit on. Um, Donald Trump talks about paying the legal fees of those who are brought up on charges, most recently the man who sucker-punched the African-American protester, and then afterwards um, said into a camera of Inside Edition, next time I would kill him. And Donald Trump has offered to pay his legal fees. Well, uh, D Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump's uh, pandering to uh, to the hatreds and uh, violent instincts of some of these crowds is very, is very alarming. But I think, in a, in a longer perspective, of we've had greater acts of violence than this during the civil rights campaign. Uh, uh, people were shot, uh, dogs were put on them, fire hoses were put on them, people were killed uh, in the civil rights campaigns. And this is this is uh, relatively small potatoes. I think it's it it it, it, it reveals a man of violent temperament and, and, and a dangerous person. But I, I think it's still on a relatively small scale. Mussolini uh, and Hitler fought in the streets with the socialists and the communists. And they were, they were dead. There were a few dead in Germany. There were actually more dead in Italy when Mussolini was sort of conquering the streets with his black shirts. Uh, that's that's real political violence. If, if Donald Trump puts his followers in colored shirts and they begin to fight in the streets, then you've got fascism. Well, in this country, a deindustrialized America, the increasing, growing disparity between rich and poor, do you think a kind of foundation is being laid that he is playing on? Well, I think there's, there's a public that he's speaking to. Uh, in in, in, <clears throat> in, in uh, Italy, after the First World War, there was a global depression. Everybody was worse off. In Germany, in 1933, everybody was worse off. Now we've got this strange uh, uh, dichotomy of a few people doing incredibly well, amassing pharaonic wealth, and most people in the middle doing somewhat better, and a group of people doing worse, with stagnant wages, with job opportunities that limited to people with technical skills that uh, poorly educated don't 
people don't have. So we've got a, a, a group of people who, who, who see the others getting ahead by leaps and bounds, and sometimes they think that black people are getting fair advantages to get ahead, and they're slipping behind. And so this is a very angry crowd of people. Do you think Donald Trump is a danger to America, or represents a danger that's already I here? I think that he his his, um, his his violent and aggressive temperament uh, installed in the powers that the, of the president of the United States is unpredictable and frightening. You're an historian. Yes. But you're looking at politics today. Yes. I think I think uh, we don't know what he would do. We know that his temperament is such that we will have foreign policy crises uh, that we shouldn't have, and we will have domestic uh, conflicts that we shouldn't have. I want to thank you very much for joining us, uh, Professor Robert Paxton, Professor Emeritus of Social Science at Columbia University. Uh, his books uh, include The Anatomy of Fascism. His recent piece is headlined as Fascism Back, and that does it for our broadcast.